end up in the environment if, if uh, measures are not successful is that what I would call unimaginable. Could they just bomb the hole? Bomb the hole where the oil is gushing out? Um, one of the, the um, concerns, which has been released and so I can actually talk about, but there, there is concern that the rock structure surrounding the pipe is not um, as strong and could, in fact, give out. And for, for I guess, many of your, your very long-term listeners might remember, but in 1969, something like that happened here in Santa Barbara, where the oil, instead of coming up the pipe, went through the seabed and the rocks and came out of the seabed. And in many different areas, it, it's, it's a much harder problem you know, to do and to solve because you don't have a single pipe to kind of seal. So one of the very big concerns of such a suggestion is that if that damaged a rock structure around the well pipe, the oil could come right through the seabed. And instead of a leak from a single point, we could have hundreds and hundreds of small leaks spread out over a large area, moving around, sealing those in 5,000 feet of water, making a cement pad it is so much harder. Why is only BP uh, monitoring the spill size? Why aren't you the scientists? Um, I think that's an excellent question, and this is one of the uh, areas that uh, I, I and other team members have indicated. If we are to learn from this oil spill so that when there is another one, because the reality is that you can't engineer accidents away. There will be accidents no matter how much we try to prevent them. And the key, of course, is that when there is an accident, you don't let the damage occur. You keep the passenger and the automobile safe. You keep the ecosystem safe. And, and the scientists have not been able to come in and actually make the measurements so that we can learn from what happened so that when there is another accident somewhere on the planet, the, the best science and technology can protect the ecosystem, and we would be talking about a small but still horrible spill rather than the very large one that we're currently faced, where we don't seem to have any good ideas to really how to stop it. Has the U.S. advanced in how it deals with these spills from decades ago? Um, so the answer to that is that the advancement has been painfully slow. Um, during uh, the event of a spill, typically, as we're seeing now, the scientists are kept away. We have to stop the spill right away. We don't have time to let the scientists come in and take a look. We scientists will come in after the fact, much later. There's government support for a few years, and then it completely dries up. And little bits of research still continue, and, and new developments are made. However, these tend not to be implemented. So there are new technologies available that are been developed, some of them with government money. But the industry has not done what they needed to do, which is continuously upgrade their boom systems, their monitoring systems to the latest technology so that when an accident like this occurs, they have the latest technology. Um, I, I think this latest technology we have today will be available for the next accident, but will be 20 years late at that point, too. Isn't it just not just the industry's fault? I mean, it's up to the government to require this. The idea that both BP and the government were saying we couldn't have foreseen this. Isn't that exactly what the government should be demanding of these oil companies doing deep offshore drilling? Is what is the catastrophe scenario and how are you going to deal with it? Um, that is exactly what the regulatory uh, regime is supposed to ensure and, uh, and clearly has, has fell down in that regard in this case. But I, I do think this is one of the areas where, um, from industry's point of view, it's in their interest. I mean, BP is not going to come out of the current event with a big profit margin because they cut short on safety. They're going to be feeling a lot of pain for a long time, as, as President Obama has indicated, um, that he, he will ensure. And, and I think that particular bottom line of pain that they're feeling is also a good wake-up call and incentive for, for safety to be brought to the forefront on, on industry and to have the support of government and activists and so on. Dr. Leifer, we have to break. Uh, before we do, though, explain your position uh, in monitoring the, uh, the oil flow and uh, your key role in this oil spill in the monitoring of it. 
right now, I, I would have to say, well, first off, we're not monitoring anything. BP is providing video that they have um, are collecting, and currently they seem to be quite forthcoming. Previously, they were selecting the video for us to analyze which meant that one could say BP was handing us what they wanted us to monitor. However, from the point of view, what there really should be at these kind of CIS sites is some acoustic methods, whether it's sonar or passive listening devices or other approaches that continuously are monitoring and waiting for something to happen and then would provide a non-stop steady data stream so we could actually be um, learn from what happens. Uh, if I have time just to say really quickly, these things, they're not steady state. They belch. They have large eruptions. The blowout is kind of an example. You have to continuously monitor it to see what happens when you're not watching. Dr. Ira Leifer, I want to thank you for being with us, researcher in the Marine Science Institute at the University of California, Santa Barbara, um, was the chief mission coordinating scientist on the NASA airborne response to the Gulf oil spill. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, we're going to look at BP's record over the years, what we haven't known. Stay with us.